am Sarah Koshamko of the G20 Summit in the Media Center, joined by Ellen Katkatis, the um, Director of External Relations at the G8 Research Group. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. First off, uh, how do you respond to critics that say the G8 is just too small to make global decisions, it's becoming obsolete? I would tend to argue that that's not the case. Clearly, we've seen that a lot of decisions have been made by the G8 in recent years that just couldn't be made within a broader group of people like the G20, particularly on the political security issues. Certainly, there's room for the G20 on the economic side of the agenda. We've seen how they've been able to reach consensus on some really important global um, economic issues. But on things like political security issues, child and maternal health, as we saw this year, on issues relating to the environment, Africa, G8 is still the name of the game. Now, we were talking to a lot of NGOs, and a lot of them have been disappointed with the um, $5 billion maternal care package. Yes. What would you say to them? Well, first of all, I'd say it's not just the $5 billion. It's $5 billion by the G8, which is a first tranche commitment, really. It's just a, a big baby step, as our director, John Curtin, has said, um, in this important process, moving into the UN conference in September, where there's going to be a stock taking of these important millennium development goals. But there's also the $2.3 billion that's been donated um, so far by other uh, uh, organizations, other aid organizations, including um, foundations such as Bill and Melinda Gates. So that total actually brings it up to 7.3 billion. And uh, it, because this is the first time this initiative has been tabled, I think um, getting that kind of consensus on, on that aid package is really quite substantial. What do you see the biggest thing coming out of uh, the G20 summit? Well, that's a very interesting question because we know going into this G20 today that there are a lot of divisions between the players on the table on some key economic um, concerns, including a bank tax, including austerity measures. And I think what they're really going to want to focus on, making sure that they've got a plan in place to deal with unemployment numbers, which are still very high in a lot of these countries, and just trying to get the global economy back on track again. Now, these protests that are happening at this particular summit are almost overshadowing the G8 and G20's uh, agenda. Yeah. How is it similar to other protests, but how is it different? Well, you know, this type of activity seems to happen at summits. It's something that we've obviously seen in the past, um, not so much at the G8, but more at the G20. So I think it's something that's disappointing for us as Canadians because this is our city and, and we'd rather not see this type of activity happening. I think there was some expectation that it would happen. I think our police forces are responding appropriately. Over 500 arrests have been made. I think to some extent it's unfortunate. It does hijack the agenda. It takes away from the issues. I hope that we can have newscasters continue to focus on, continue to focus on the issues really that are on the table. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining us. This is Ellen Kadkoxis from a G8 Research Group. Thanks again. Thank you.